Something big is on the table for the Toronto Blue Jays. We're not sure if it's going to happen, but they're in the market for some big-time free agents, whether it be pitchers, bats, or whatnot. I mean, they're open to trade anybody. They're open to acquire anybody. And it's going to be a whirlwind of an offseason, and it's just getting started for the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, before we start this video, I want to give a shout-out to my Montreal Alouettes for winning the Great Cup yesterday. Shout-out to them. First time in 13 years. If you're from the Montreal area, there's going to be a parade on Wednesday, so make sure to be there because I will be. But, Nick, that was a great game that we saw yesterday, but this Blue Jays offseason is maybe even going to be greater than that because so much stuff, so many news and rumors have been coming out lately. And this is not some makeshift reports that, that are coming out here. It's not like me or you speculating that they're going to go out and get Shohei Otani. This is Ben Nicholson-Smith, Arden Zwelling, all of those guys that are so in tune with this Blue Jays organization that are predicting... Maybe not something big going to happen, but definitely the Blue Jays are going to try to make something big happen. And it's definitely exciting to think about what that is, though, what that big move may be. Still unsure of that, but nothing's off the table here, as it seems. Yeah, and before we get into all of that, quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. We're very, very close to 10,000, and uh, go down. About 70% of you guys aren't subscribed. All right, yeah, let's get into the first topic, which is what you said, a huge Ben Smith report. It dropped about an hour ago, and... Uh, it's stuff is starting to get a little bit wild right now for the Toronto Blue Jays. And this was the report right here. It says, early this winter, Blue Jays are showing real interest in big names, including top free agent pitchers per sources. But the bats are still the Jays' priority, but they're keeping their possibilities open. Active in the trade market, too. Doesn't mean they'll land a star, but it's at least on the table. Now, this is about the second or third report. We had uh, Jeff Passan say the exact same thing a few days ago, saying that they're really in the market for a big you know, big splash or big push for a big player. And now Ben Nicholson Smith comes out and confirms that. And again, Ben is probably the most reliable reporter alongside Shai Davidi that the Blue Jays have. And he honestly, if you think back to other seasons, he doesn't say this too, too often regarding big names. Again, mm -hmm. they've gotten George Springer, Kevin Gosman, two of the bigger free agents in the past few years. And Peter, it looks like they might be going for that again. And they said the pitchers as well. And we have the Alec Manoa uh, report that came out yesterday. I know you weren't there for that video, but the Jays are interested in potentially shopping Manoa. The only way that makes sense is if they acquire someone like uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So I don't know. There's a lot of smoke where there's smoke, there's fire. And this, there's a remarkable amount of smoke around the Jays right now. And I'm increasingly confident there's some fire beneath it. That's what a bunch of Jays fans, writers, reporters are saying. What are your thoughts on this? I think it could be, uh, I'm getting my hopes up a little bit too high probably. Well, I, I wouldn't say that, Nick, because the Jays acknowledge that they have to do something. And it's been a couple of seasons now of just failure and not meeting expectations. I'm not going to count that season where they started in Buffalo and, and then went to Florida. You, you know, that that was a, a bit of a roller coaster for them. And they almost pulled it out. They were the hottest team in baseball towards the end. But what did they lose? They lost Marcus Simeon. And then you could tell that there was a huge void left by his absence in the coming years after that. The Jays were missing a leader. They were missing a guy who is going to be in the lineup day in, day out, and provide value for you. Now, as great as George Springer is, as battle-tested as he is, he's been hurt, and he hasn't been able to stay on the field. And this year, he didn't exactly meet expectations. So if the Jays have a guy like Marcus Simeon, that kind of puts all that aside. You know, you don't need George Springer to be your top guy because Marcus Simeon had an unbelievable season in 2021. And then when they lost him, I don't think this team, I don't think the clubhouse quite recovered from that loss. Uh, so you could see what difference a star player makes or, or a legit top 10 player in the game, because that's what I consider Simeon to be. And what did he do this year? He won a World Series with the Texas Rangers for the first time in their franchise's history. So the Jays need to be in the market for a player of that caliber. It's hard to find a player of the caliber of Marcus Simeon, but you need to find someone that is going to bring everyone together, that is going to be your de facto leader by example on that field. And it's hard. It's not, they don't grow on trees. They don't make them uh, like that anymore. And that's why Mark Simeon's one of the elite players in the game. That's why he led his team to a World Series. 
And this is why the Blue Jays have struggled in the past couple of years, because they've been missing a guy like that. So if they can be in the market for a star player, whether it be a Shohei Otani, a Cody Bellinger, a Yoshinobu Yamamoto, those guys put you a lot closer to your end goal than you may have been previously. So I don't think you're overreacting here. I don't think you're... Um, crazy to think that the blue jays need to do something huge they do you know they've failed too many times here and their window is shrinking and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and if they don't make that subsequent move to put them over the top then we're just going to be talking about the same thing come year's end we're going to be talking about another playoff failure another year of guys not meeting expectations and you don't want to put yourself in that position again if you're the blue jays front office so payroll aside their budget budgetary constraints aside which i'm sure they don't really have any they need to do something and i think ownership acknowledges that with all the renovations coming in as well you don't want to put a losing product on the field you want to get some home playoff games as well and i think you need to make some big moves for that to happen yeah and we're looking at big moves obviously he says uh, interest in quote big names i can really think of particularly at least in the free agent market, three guys, and that's Bellinger, Yamamoto, and Shohei Otani. Then you can look at Jorge mm -hmm. Soler. If you consider him a big name, I wouldn't really do that. But that means that, I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Jays land one of those three guys. I feel like the most likely is probably Cody Bellinger. They had interest in him in the past. Then maybe Yamamoto. And I, I think Shohei Otani, again, might be, it definitely is a bit of a long shot for the Jays. But I don't know, the amount of times that the Jays keep getting mentioned in these big names, at the very least, I don't want to be a finalist for him. I would love to get one of those three, but like you said, it needs to happen. And then there's also the conversation around Alec Manoa, sign you know, Yamamoto, Trey Manoa in the deal for a bat, and then of course, obviously a joke about Otani, but it makes more sense now, the like reports speculating that Alec Manoa could be traded. We could look back to that Ben Nichols the Smith article where he kept having Manoa in trade talks, and now he's saying that they're pursuing top free agent pitchers. And obviously, Aaron Nola got signed. You have Blake Snell that comes to mind. Lance Lynn just signed a contract 10 minutes before this video was recorded. So there's not too many high end pitchers. I, I can't imagine they're going for Blake Snell. And of course, Yamamoto is probably the biggest one. So. I don't know, there's not too many big names out there, so that's a good thing and there's a bad thing, as in they're pursuing the best guys, but there's going to be a ton of competition for these guys, and I just can't help but think they land one of the three, although that might be the optimistic side. I think they need to, or a very high possibility as well, is the trade market where they go out and make a big splash with their prospects, and who knows whether it's Ricky Tiedemann, I don't think they're going to trade him, or some of the other guys, Barriera, but... I don't know. It's uh, it's very, very interesting. Any quick final mm -hmm. thoughts before we move on to the, the next topic, which is another guy the Jays are pursuing? Yeah, in order to not be a finalist and not have to deal with that, you got to be in on all three of those guys that you mentioned. Whether you get all three or not, probably not going to happen, but you got to get one of them, and you got to get someone that moves the needle significantly for you. So whether that's Cody Bellinger, Yamamoto, um, even Soler to a certain degree, and obviously we're going to put Shohei Otani in that group, you got to get one of those guys, and, and you have to significantly improve in one area because if you run it back with a couple of minor additions, you're not really changing anything. It's like trying to run through a brick wall. You're not going to get a different result than you did before. But I want to give my quick thoughts on Alec Manoa before we move on to this. I know I wasn't there for the video yesterday, Nick, but I'm still on the train of not trading him whatsoever. Because why would you do that? What, what happens if he goes to another organization and he finds it again and you just traded him for a guy who hasn't even panned out yet at the major league level? Give him a little bit of time. If he struggles and you can't get anything for him, then it is what it is. But you don't sell for pennies the dollar when it comes to one of your top guys in your organization. I'm totally against it. Don't do it. I don't care if the relationship is fractured. you got to put the egos aside if you're both parties, and you got to try to work this thing out because Manoa, as great as those pitching options are in free agency, like Yamamoto, like Blake Snell, this is a guy who is – making under a million dollars who you can have for the next four to five years at least. So why would you want to get rid of that? A young, controllable arm that, if he finds it, is one of the more dynamic pitchers in the game. Take the pressure off him, put him in that fifth starter spot in the rotation, and then let things work itself out from there. And if it doesn't, that's when you swing a trade. That's when you trade one of your prospects to get someone more proven for your rotation. But I wouldn't jump the gun on that sense. I would keep Alec Manoa around, and I wouldn't 
trade him for pennies on the dollar. That would just be stupid. Yeah, I echo the uh, the exact same sentiment there. One quick thing before we do wrap up is that the Jays are pursuing Yammer uh, Candelario. This dropped a couple of days ago, and this is from John Morrissey. So Candelario turns 30 this week is a popular name. The Nationals, Blue Jays, and Angels are among teams pursuing him. And uh, if those are the only two other teams alongside the Blue Jays, I think we got a good shot at outbidding either of those teams because neither of them like to spend any money whatsoever. Uh, Candelario is very, very solid. You look at the stats here. He could be a nice fit, but again, I think this report – the Ben Nicholas Smith one, this would be a good complimentary piece to one of the big names if the Jays are yes. able to get them. And in that case, I would be fine. But if this is the big splash, I uh, I wouldn't be too, too happy with that. But give me Candelario if we also get maybe Bellinger or we get one of the other guys. Any quick thoughts on now this? We echoed it in the past, but this is the first official report linking uh, Candelario to the Blue Jays. Yeah, well, he you got to think that he's going to cost a lot less than Matt Chapman. So this is one of those moves that we've been talking about where you can save in – the third base department, you could get a stopgap player before one of Herovis Martinez or Addison Barger or Damiano Palmagiani are ready to go in the big leagues. So you buy yourself some time in that regard and you don't have to give him a five-year deal or a six-year deal like Matt Chapman is commanding. So you save in that regard, but that allows you to spend when it comes to left field, when it comes to center field or or even other positions like DH that, that are of need. So yes, I'm, I'm okay with this move like you said if it's a subsequent move and if you get one of those top dogs or one of the big fish in free agency because if you don't and if this is your significant move of the offseason i'm predicting another season of just total disappointment and us being bamboozled yet again by this Blue Jays run office. Yeah, and I suspect a move to happen very, very soon. Stuff is really heating up. We saw the NOLA contract. Lens Lynn got signed uh, to the $10 million deal. The Braves just signed Ronaldo Lopez. So stuff is really starting to heat up, and I suspect Otani or another player will uh, will sign over the next coming weeks. So that'll wrap up the video. If you want to see my video from yesterday about Manoa, click on your screen now. Echo the same thing Peter said. Do not trade Manoa, but that'll wrap it up, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, and hopefully uh, some moves are getting done.